This is Drew with Boomer Music Company, your band and orchestra experts since 1976, and thepodcastingstore.com, the one-stop shop for all things podcasting and remote learning. This is your weekend update. Well, greetings and welcome to your weekend update. I know I always uh, commentate a little bit on things as it relates to the uh, schools and what's going on in them as a parent with kids in school. Uh, that is just natural. But this is a weird time. We had four days on and now it's a four day weekend with the uh, President's Day holiday. And then Friday was also a day off from school, which then means it's another four days on. So odd time of year, but uh, the show must go on. And so uh, at CMEA, Braden actually had a chance to sit down with uh, Miranda and Christy from the Hard Landings podcast. And they had a really great conversation about gear and talking about what they're up to with that and the inspiration behind their podcast. And the overarching theme uh, to me was that whatever your passion is, uh, you can create a podcast for it. There is an audience for it. There are people out there that are interested in what you have to say. And uh, what they were talking about was kind of up Grading their gear and uh, making it even more professional production. They have over a hundred episodes. If you haven't checked it out yet, you really should um, follow the uh, the QR code or the link. You know, Hard Landings Podcast. And uh, but what they talk about are disasters, specifically aviation disasters. They go in depth as to what happened, why it happened, and then what's been done to mitigate it in the future. Uh, so here is uh, Miranda and Christy talking about their inspiration for the podcast and how they got into it in the first place. He had us uh, watch a show called Air Disasters. Put on by the Smithsonian Channel. Oh, that sounds like fun. And um, I binged the entire season in like two days. So. Oh, wow. <laughs> it was, yeah, it was like once you start watching, like you can't stop watching, right? <laughs> so we would just talk about it over and over. And then he was like, we should start a podcast. And, and we so were, we did. <laughs> well, it was like it was like one of those things where I was like, yeah, sure, whatever. And then it actually happened, and we were like, wait, oh, okay. <laughs> no, it, it really dawned on Miranda when Nick was like, no, I bought the equipment. And she's like, oh, <laughs> okay, this is a thing now. <laughs> Well, and that dovetails nicely into something that has been a passion project of mine, which is my Beyond the Stage podcast, which is all about non-performing careers in music. So uh, again, keep in mind, whatever your passion is, if you want to get your message out there, it's not that hard to do. It's not that expensive to do. And there is an audience. So this uh, most recent episode of Beyond the Stage features uh, someone who, if you live in this area, you, you have to know Harold Stone. He's a, a legend in uh, the music industry around here in Colorado. And uh, I I titled uh, the two episodes that I've done, part one uh, released this week, uh, A Life Lived in Music. And that is so true with Harold. Um, he has just been in and around music as a performer in um, the army band back during the Korean War, um, and then working so closely with schools, with music education, and just trying to get instruments in the hands of kids. And that's really been a passion project of his to spread the good word about the value of music and music education and how much it has crossover into uh, the three R's, read and write and arithmetic. So here's a, a really short clip from a great conversation that I had with Harold where he talks about the uh, additional educational benefits of music just beyond music making. Every principal of every school and every superintendent and all of the teachers should keep this in mind. That's what we're here for, is to open the door and teach the whole world of what we're getting out of first grade. In the very first grade, this is participating by, in, in force because you have all these little kids together that look at each other and count to one to four at least, mm -hmm. and sometimes do fractions because when the last time you cut that thing in half and you have, you have eight notes in there. So in the first and second and third grade, we're teaching reading, writing, and arithmetic. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then as I've been saying, uh, we're entering instrument tryout season and uh, we're really starting in the thick of it. I was helping out over at High Plains School this last week and I'll be doing it again this Tuesday with the fifth graders as they're trying to pick out an instrument. And uh, one of the things that came out of my interactions with the kids, uh, there was one kid that was kind of hemming and hawing what instrument to pick and I said to him, look, it's an instrument, it's not a tattoo. And uh, so that was kind of a, a funny moment and uh, I've made that one of the themes on my uh, View from the Road video. Also that we're no longer masked now in Thompson School District and so we're still trying to suss out how all that works. Um, and it's, you know, we're making it up as we go along, but I think we're doing some good stuff and we're really helping kids to find their musical voice. So uh, here's the uh, clip from uh, It's an Instrument, Not a Tattoo. The things that we really want to impress upon them is 
the choice they make today doesn't have to be the way that it goes forever. Uh, I said to a kid today, you know, he, uh, one of the uh, student teacher that Shauna has, uh, Ben, was asking if, um, you know, if that was the instrument the kid wanted to do, and the kid was hemming and hawing on it, and I, I looked at the kid and I said, this is an instrument, it's not a tattoo. You can undo it, you can change your mind, that's fine. And I think that kind of put the kid a little bit more at ease uh, for what he's going to choose, because it, it, yes, it's an important decision, but it's not an undoable decision. And uh, I think exploration... And then uh, this week's essay, I was actually reading an article by Michael Easter uh, where he talked about learning uh, how to do bouldering. He lives outside of Las Vegas, so uh, he's out in the Mojave and uh, talking about how looking foolish is the way to uh, gaining facility at doing new things. And that really reminded me of my journey when I first started to learn to really enjoy modern music. I was playing in uh, Bridgewater State College band. Uh, members of my quintet got me in there. And then the uh, Doc Garcia, the conductor, asked me to be in another ensemble. I said, yeah, sure, not knowing what I'd gotten into. And being willing to look foolish and play some modern music really led to some great things along the way through college and afterwards and in uh, beginning my career as a music librarian. And so uh, check out that essay because uh, I think there's some valuable uh, insights in there that when we don't care what other people think or how we look, that's when we can really grow and do some really great things. So that is your weekend update. As always, thank you so much for watching. Like, share, and subscribe, and uh, we will see you at the store. If you enjoyed the weekend update, do me a favor and follow us on social media, subscribe to our YouTube channels, or visit our websites. This is Drew with Boomer Music Company and thepodcastingstore.com. Thanks for listening.